Hello, my name is Dr. Jeff Aberly, and in this video, I'm going to cover seven different aspects to laser therapy for humans and animals uh, that sometimes are a little difficult to understand. So I've made this animation, and it's a simplified way of looking at this, I understand, but it does get the point across, at least that I, I believe it does. So you can be the judge of that, see if this helps clear up some misunderstandings you may have. Um, and so what I have here is a, a laser emitter, and this would be the, the wand or the handle um, that emits the laser energy. And this might be attached to a machine, it might be attached to a robot arm or whatever. But anyway, it's the thing that's putting out the laser energy. Now laser light, or even from a flashlight, any type of energy in the form of light is made up of photons. And so I represent photons here with these particles. And they're just white. I'm not going to change the color of the particles at all. And you see this going into tissues, the skin, muscle, bone. And there's a, a, an apparent depth that this goes into. So you can see they start to kind of fade out right around here, right? Um, and so these different parameters here will change whether we get more superficial or more deep, spreading the energy out over a wider distance. All these different factors can come into play. And so we're going to start out with average power. Now, average power is probably what you're familiar on your machine. You know, it's a number that's probably displayed very obviously when you're using your machine. This is the average wattage that your machine puts out. And right now I have it at 20. And as you'll notice as I scrub this up and scrub it down, this literally can translate to the number of photons. In fact, knowing the average power and knowing the wavelength, you can figure out how many photons are actually coming out of your laser. And it's a very, very large number. Uh, it doesn't really matter um, what you're more interested in the wattage. So the more wattage, the more photons you get out, the more work you can get done. Now the other wattage that we'll talk about is pulse power. Pulse power, that more determines the depth that you can, you can reach in a target tissue, to, you know, towards the target tissue you want. So the more, the higher the pulse power, in terms of wattage, the further you can get in. And this is just a fact of physics. Now you'll see this number here, you might think this is a typo. Most lasers on the market today have pulse powers that are like 15, you know, one five, and here I'm showing 50,000. But there is a laser that's available that can go all the way to 130, 132,000 watts of peak pulse power and still have an average power that's very reasonable. And there's the trick of physics that, um, that this machine takes advantage of. There's several of them that have what's called super pulse technology. And super pulse is not a marketing term. It really is a real thing. And uh, if you're ever gonna buy a super pulse laser, you know, make sure you understand what it is. And because um, super pulse could be used as a marketing term just to get you to buy it, to make it sound better, but it's really not super pulse. And I have seen a few advertisements like that and I'm like, oh man, What's, what's going on already with this, right? So uh, I just don't like when people lie. And so pulse power is very, very important. And what you'll notice here as I, as I scrub this down, you'll notice that the particles don't get as far into the tissues. So here I'm at a pulse power, let's just say, I can't even get it down to what a normal laser would be. I think 575 is the lowest I can get down here. But you'll see it doesn't penetrate as much. But then as I uh, crank it up here, you'll see that they get much further in. Now this is just a representation, so you know don't hold me to these numbers. Like, so I'm getting down to the bone on everything. It just depends on where you are in the body, but it's a representation that greater depth is achieved with higher, higher pulse powers than it is with lower pulse powers. Plain and simple. Now the same amount of photons is coming out of the machine, whether I'm at a pulse power of 575 or 130,000. It's just that that no, those number of photons are getting deeper or not is based on the pulse power. So there's two wattages that you have to be aware of. And um, this usually isn't talked about a whole lot, but it's very, very important to separate pulse power versus average power. And every laser has both. It's just most of the time the pulse power is not talked about. The average power is what's talked about. And this is what everyone just is trying to crank up and get higher and higher with leaving this still at, at low levels in my opinion. Okay, so let's just, we'll turn this down to you know, something reasonable there and the lens aperture. Okay, so what does that do? Well, this is just like your flashlight, how you can zoom in or zoom out on the lens. And if you zoom in, your flashlight beam gets very narrow and very bright. And if you zoom out, 
it gets very broad and you cover more areas you can see around you more but it's not as intense it just depends on what you're looking for uh, so lens aperture this can be changed and sometimes sometimes the lenses on the lasers are fixed and you can't change this at all other lasers have uh, different lenses in here and that can be changed and so you can actually change this value here okay lens distance this is just the distance that the lens is away from the skin and you'll notice that the further I go away from the skin the more broad I can treat but now the intensity gets less so you have to leave it there longer to get the same amount of work done as if you had it closer but now you're getting a smaller area so there's a trade-off there's a trade-off and it's very important to understand the distance and the aperture okay so, you know, most of the lasers, again, have a fixed uh, fixed lens, and so you can't change this aperture at all. So the lens distance you can play with, right? Just hold it a little further away from the body. And if you are closer, you might have to move it faster so that heat doesn't build up. Now, wavelength. Wavelength is a very important concept to understand. And wavelength is always described in nanometers. And if you look at the actual you know, electronic waveform of this or the, the visual waveform, it's actually, it is a distance. Nano means 10 to the minus ninth. So this is a very small number, even though you might see it as a big number here when you put nanometers after this, it's actually very small numbers. But that doesn't really matter. What you need to know is you'll, as you, as you work with lasers, you'll become more familiar with this concept of nanometers. And if you come over to the chart over here, You'll see that this is this is wavelength in term of nan, terms of nanometers down at the bottom here. So that matches up with this. And as I scrub this this slider here in the top right, you'll see these dots, the blue and the red dot, following along exactly in the same spots. So it's matching down here what's what you see up here. And what this is showing is relative absorption uh, of the photons into either hemoglobin or water and this this does this makes a difference this makes a difference this is this is very simple to understand once you see it and so typically the longer the wavelength so forget about this chart for a second in general the longer the wavelength the deeper you get into tissues the reason being is you have less scatter now what's scatter I'll just turn the scatter effects on here and you can see a representation of scatter Scatter is where photons come in and they basically bounce off of other molecules and they get scattered. And you can see them kind of jumping around down here. So it's a, little, a cool little effect. Now that scatter, the scattering that you see here is determined by a wavelength. So the shorter the wavelength, the smaller the number, the more scattering you get. And a lot of it is right at the surface. You can see right here, it's really, you're getting a lot of scatter right there at the surface where if I, and less depth, because everything is just scattering and, and flying everywhere. What you want is you want these things to actually penetrate and not scatter. And that's an advantage you get with a longer wavelength laser. So if I turn this all the way up to 1100, which you'll never really see a laser work at that. It's generally 1064 is the longest, but this graph went up to 1100, so I made this 1100 you'll see that these penetrate much further and there's a lot less scatter. You'll still see some. you still see little dots flying around in here, but it's nothing like this. So you see the difference? I mean, that's that's pretty extreme difference. And again, just a representation. Uh, so as you, as you get closer to the red and then you go all the way to the violet, you get much more scattering effects. And, um, and we'll leave it at that. Now the other extreme, you know, 1,064 nanometers is called infrared. So anything, any wavelengths that are longer than the red wavelengths, which kind of are around the 650, 655, longer. So going to the right on the graph here, they, they penetrate further, less scattering, but you can continue going down on this graph, which I'm not showing here, all the way down to body heat. Now body heat is called far infrared. Now body heat, you know, you know, because your body makes it and you can go in, in far infra, in infrared saunas and they are 
far infrared. Now, they don't have enough energy per photon to really do the work that we're trying to do by unclogging the cytochrome C oxidase enzymes, getting ATP production to skyrocket in tissues. That's one of the big effects we're really looking for with lasers. So we need to be up in these ranges somewhere. And you'll see the wording here, therapeutic window. Well, this would be one window. And then down here would be another because we don't have the absorption of water and hemoglobin. Okay. So let me just show that because I built that into this just so you could see it. So right now we're at 1100 nanometers for a wavelength. And I'm going to drop that so that the blue circle comes over here and we'll see the effect on the, the particles. I'm going to turn off the scatter just to avoid that. And I'm going to drop this down to where the blue is at the top. And what you'll see is we don't get as much penetration because these photons that are at this wavelength now are being absorbed by the water. And so they're not doing what we want to do, and all they do is create extra heat. Now I'm going to go to the right side of this graph again, and you'll see that they penetrate further. Okay, so here we go. Okay, so you saw how they are now going in further. So that's a representation of what I'm showing here. So I'm going to go back to the top of the top of the blue, and we'll see they don't penetrate as well. And then I'm going to go down to the left side of the blue curve, and we'll see that they penetrate better again. But now our wavelength is a little shorter so we don't get quite as good effect on this side of the graph as we would on this side does that make sense so now i'm going to take it down even further to the left here and we'll get up to the hemoglobin range so now we're getting the effect of less uh shorter wavelength and the hemoglobin now absorbing a lot of the energy so the hemoglobin found in red blood cells is absorbing a lot of the energy now maybe that's the effect you want but if you're trying to get deeper into tissues to get this uh, biostimulation effect, um, the bio, you know, photobiomodulation, then this, is, this wavelength is a little harder to, to penetrate because the blood that's coursing through these tissues will absorb that energy. So that's what this graph is here to show is that there's a nice therapeutic, there's two therapeutic windows which are very good to have your lasers in. Okay. Now, a lot of machines will have three lasers in them and they might choose say for example 810 for one of them 980 for the other 1064 for the third one and they combine the three lasers together into one fiber optic cable and then that comes out the laser head so there's actually three different lasers coming out here i'm only showing one and then i'm i'm changing the wavelength on that one laser so I was not going to complicate this by trying to have three lasers all coming out here and have different particles going further. And I mean, that just, just confuses the matter. So just remember that, that this is really all these examples here I'm showing are just literally one, one laser. And the Lumix Q has one major laser in it. And it's at 1064 nanometers. Uh, other lasers will put three different different ones in there or two. And um, the Lumix Q also has a small, uh, low-powered red one, just so you can see where it's going. Because 1064, 1064 nanometers, you can't see. You can't see a 10, you can't see 910, you can't see any of these. They're infrared, they're below the visual spectrum. And that's the other reason why I didn't color these particles. I thought about it initially, but I'm like, well, what would I color these ones? They don't have a color. Uh, so it was just uh, something I just I decided just to leave the color is white so you could see them here against these other backgrounds. So I, I hope this was um, advantageous. Um, again, just recap, you know, we got average power, which determines the number of photons, pulse power, which determines the depth of the photons. Very important, very, very important to have this to be you know, as high as you want it or as high as you need to get. The lens aperture, this, this is pretty self-explanatory because everyone's used a flashlight that has that feature. Lens distance, that's pretty straightforward too. And then the wavelength, not so straightforward. So I hope I did a, a decent job of explaining that to you. Um, and uh, that was the hardest one to try to recreate in here too because it's just you know, getting all this to work like that was... was uh, was, was kind of challenging, but it was actually really fun to, to do this.
Um, so anyway, I uh, hope this was educational for you. And if you have any questions, I'll, I'll put my contact information here. We'll sort of, I'll have my name and, you know, I'm, I'm basically a chiropractor from, from Madison, Wisconsin. And I was an electrical engineer before this and I became a chiropractor and I like laser physics and I like helping people get results. And so I've had, I've gone through six different laser systems over the last what, six years, seven years, six or seven years. And I've sold them all except two of them. And the two that I've kept are super pulse lasers. And super pulse is not a, is not a marketing term. Like I say, it, it's actually a true thing, but it might be being used as a marketing term. So you have to know what super pulse is, especially if you're buying a super pulse, you better know what that is. Otherwise you might be wasting your money buying something that truly isn't what you think it is. So I have other videos that I've made showing the different uh, waveforms uh, that, that distinguish continuous wave lasers and super pulse lasers. And um, I, I really feel that super pulse will be the, the momentum going forward when it comes to the laser industry. I hope it is because I, I really like the results it gives and um, I'll, I'll just leave it at that. But if you have any questions, like I say, give me a, give me a call. I like talking about this stuff and um, can answer any questions you have. And I might have, I might have had the system that you, you have right now or that you're considering buying. And I can tell you, you know, what I, what I got from that. But like I say, I've sold all of them other than two Lumix uh, Super Pulse lasers and I love them. So again, my name is Dr. Jeff Aberly and thanks for watching. Have a great day.